all, welcome to Scrapping with Sherry. If you watched my last video, you noticed that I started in the 101 scrapbooking ideas and sketches from Creative Memories. This was a bonus in early October. And one of the goals is to go ahead and complete all of the sketches in this book in the next year. Now, in the first video, I did page five, that sketch. Of course, mine looked very different. But today, I wanted us to go on and do page six. Now, this sketch, again, only has room for two photos, some journaling. But I'm going to take the basic elements of this sketch and make this into a two-page spread. So, really, all you need is a background color and something contrasting to put on the outside edges. And let me just tell you, if you are a welder, this would be a good opportunity to just cut the side off and flip this over and weld it back together if you liked those colors. Those aren't actually the colors I'm planning to use, so I won't be doing that welding look today. But the measurements show us that this little block right here, this um, border down the side is one and a half by 12. And then it shows us the measurements of the photo mats. That's about all we need to know. So I need a one and a half on the side. Now, because I am making this into a two page spread, I'm going to do the one and a half on this side and this side of my two pages rather than doing them both on the same page. So let's go ahead and get cutting. So all I need is two one and a half inch strips. I think I mentioned to you last time too, I wondered if these sketches are going to be in order of ease. Like if the beginning sketches are the easier ones and then it gets harder as you go. I haven't looked ahead a whole lot because I just kind of like seeing what's there and doing it. So we've got our one and a half and we're basically through with the cutting until we start matting our photos. It doesn't get a lot easier than that. So let's go ahead and adhere these side pieces. And then what they did was in the birthday bash collection, there are actually letters that spell out happy birthday. And they are so cute. They're larger than our sticker letters. And I really like those, but I've already used that look. This is gonna be a birthday page, but it's also got um, something extra to go along with it. So what I did was I went ahead and cut letters out on my silhouette machine to make my title blocks. And I just laid those on my zero centering ruler to bring them over. But I am going to go ahead and stick those using my repositionable tape. One thing I do that may be kind of odd is I start at the top and the bottom. Because I want my letters to kind of even out in the middle. And if you start at one end and just keep going down that end, you typically find that you're either too close to one side or the other. And then you have to go back and move a lot anyway. So by going top and bottom at the same time, it helps me even out my spacing a little bit better as I go. parts of the sketch done. The basic elements are a background and two side pieces, and we just split those to make them um, a double page spread. Now all I've got to do is add my photos. Now they did some big embellishment here. I'm not really going to do that, and it's okay, but let's pull out the photos and see what we've got to go with. Now my photos are going to look like two separate events just because um, we had my daughter open her presents. And then they left to go on their bike ride. I did pull this because a trip around the sun just seems appropriate for a birthday page. And the colors went well with my background paper I've got here. This paper actually is from Summer Denim. It was, I think it was an advisor pack, an advisor exclusive that um, most of us offer to our customers, but I do like it too. 
And I am going to have to do some journaling here. But I've got a lot of dead space here. I could add a journal box here when I cut these down. So I think there's lots of room to do journaling. But let's go ahead and chop these pictures down. Oh, I did find a scrap laying here that I really think I'm going to use right there. I had two little bitty scraps left over from the paper that I cut my letters out on. And I thought those would make a nice defining line right here. It just kind of draws that color out more. Look what a difference that makes from one side to the other, just adding that line. So if in doubt, add a quarter inch scrap. Now was this on the sketch? No, but that's okay because the sketches are a jumping point to get us started on our journey. All right, let me slide this one over and we'll start on these photos first. Now I've got plenty of room side to side, I think, but I wanna take some off the tops of these, not even necessarily any off the bottoms. In this one, her head is just a touch taller, so I'm going to look at that one to take it off. I don't want to cut her head off. And she gets shoes every year for her birthday. She likes a certain kind of shoes, and she doesn't buy them for herself. So every year for her birthday, she gets shoes. In fact, she and my son-in-law both get new shoes for Christmas or for their birthdays every year. And... Um, she was pretty excited when she opened these because the colors were very different than any she had ever had before. She was pretty excited. Now we've got this trip around the sun, which I would really like to add in here since this was her opening her gifts. And I think the best way to do that might be to add it right in the middle. Now, normally, you know me, I use one sheet of paper and I mat everything on one sheet of paper but I don't really want to do that on this because I don't want to lose the color we've got going through the middle here. So I think I'm going to mat these independently. I know this is going to shock you because I very rarely mat them all separately. I really like this color, but I like it over here too. Why don't we just do a couple in one color and a couple in the other? You know I never do that either. we stick these. Now let's go back to that zero centering ruler again. Why would I go to my zero centering ruler? Just to help me with spacing. There's this darker line right through here. It's an inch line and I'm going to line it up beside that cute little border we put in. I'm going to go ahead and put tape on these two pictures. I'm back to my regular tape. And I just hold this ruler down and slide my photo up against it. And that helps me get those lined up in the same spacing side to side. Now I'm also looking at the top and the bottom because I want about the same space top and bottom. And I know that those photos are lined up down that left side now. Now over here, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm not gonna leave myself quite as wide a border. I'm using this line. It's actually a half inch line. I love the lines on this roller. And I do go ahead and put tape on both of them just so I'm ready to go. Now I'm looking at the bottoms here. I want the bottoms to kind of be evened up. And you know, if I wanted to measure everything, I could measure that and make sure I've got that even. And the beauty of this is if they're not exactly even, I can always go back and finagle it just a little. Yep, this blue one is a little bit higher. And the bottom edges are actually what I want to be straight. This right here doesn't matter so much because we're gonna stick our little embellishment in there. Let's pull out thumb squares. Because this is not a sticker, I just used three of the thumb squares on here. 
because I don't have to worry about the metal sticking at all. It's an embellishment, so it's paper. A trip around the sun. And that page is done. So let's get everything over a little bit and let's look at our second page. We are gonna need to do some trimming here. And here I'll take off some top and some excess here. So let's go back to our personal trimmer. His head is taller here, but I want these two the same height. So I'm gonna go on this one so we don't cut off his head. I'm gonna stack these two together and cut them as well. You notice I'm not cutting any side to side on that, and that's because I just really don't need that extra side to side space. So I'm not real worried about that part. There's so much excess I could cut off here, but I don't think I'm going to because I think what I'm gonna do is go back and add journaling that will cover a lot of that. So let's do our matting here. And I'm almost thinking we should do exactly what we did on the others. We, mat, we will mat two in the blue and two in the tealish color. I need my regular tape for this. And I'm liking the fact that I've got a little extra blue here. So I'm probably not gonna cut that off. I'm probably gonna leave these mats a little bit larger than I usually do, just because I've got so much space on this page. I know it shocks you that I'm only putting four pictures on a page, but I am learning to narrow down my pictures somewhat. You know, when you have thousands of pictures to scrapbook, you, you kind of start to trying to decide what's really important. In the scheme of life, was this really important? Maybe, maybe not, but it was to me. How about we put them in the right spot? All right, and let's do the two on this teal color. And we're almost finished, y'all. I just need to do a little journaling. I'm gonna try to get the borders about the same. They're not gonna be exactly the same. That probably bothers some of you, but it's okay. Now look at that, we've got almost two cute pages done. Now, let me pull out my zero centering ruler one more time without knocking everything over. And I'm doing that because I do wanna kinda of get these the same top and bottom. So let's go ahead and put tape on the two bottom ones. And I'm trying to even out some of this side to side space on this particular layout. We've got about the same amount on this side here and here. A little bit heavier on this side, but that's okay. Remember, I left a lot of color on this side because I wanted this trip around the sun to kind of be a focal point there. And we'll add our last two photos. And then I'll do some journaling and let you see the finished page in a minute. I'm almost feeling like I would love a circular journal box here. My biggest problem is in doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very limited on space, and I don't know that I want the circles matchy matchy. So I do think I, I'm gonna go with my original plan and journal down here and cover that up. So if that's the way I'm going, maybe I don't want all my photos exactly squared up on this one. Maybe I wanna do some overlapping. Let's just change it all midstream here. I gotta go down here because I gotta get that one in. Over and down, and I'm just leaving tiny little backgrounds showing right here. In doing this though, I'm gonna bring out a lot more color of my background. So that one looks just totally different and I like that. Now I did find this little bicycle and I think I'm gonna hang on to it until I do my journaling here. And then I'll add my journaling and we'll put the bicycle on there and see how it works out. In trying to figure out my journaling and also to use up the few little scraps I had left from this collection, I flipped a piece of this and it's got this um, khaki colored on the back. I like that khaki um, plaid, not really plaid, I guess it's a check khaki check. And then I had these little scraps that I had left over from matting that I decided would make great little bullet journaling boxes. So let me grab my tape and we're going to stick this down first. Now I, um, I used a little banner edge 
to edge this out because I, I just like the look of the banner on this. Don't ask me why, but I thought it was cute. I'm doing these in chronological order. They don't necessarily look as well as they might look if I flipped them up because of the spacing, but it's okay. This one is going to go on the bottom. It's a lot wider top to bottom, a lot taller, I guess is the right word. So I'm going to add that one on the bottom and then I'll center this one in the middle. I don't do a lot of bullet journaling, but I felt like for this, it worked well because we've got several things going on in these pictures. And then I mentioned to you, I had this bicycle sticker that I had located and look, it just matches that bicycle. So I think I'm going to add it right here with a couple of foam squares. It is a sticker. So I probably want to add a little foam square right there just to make sure that that doesn't dump down in the middle. And my journaling has chronicled the day. Breakfast here. She loved her shoes. They went on the bike ride. And I've got the whole day covered. The only thing I don't have on here is the date. And, you know, in a lot of worlds, that might not be real important because I know when my daughter's birthday is. But where do you add it when you've already done your journaling? Well, I'm going to go back and pop it right up here. And my background paper is light enough that I can journal directly on it. I didn't want to make a big production about it, but I did want the date on there. So this page is totally complete with journaling, with stickers. I have used up this particular paper pack, so um, I don't have anything else to work with on that, but I really like the look of this page. Now remember, this is page six in our sketchbook from Creative Memories, from the 101 Scrapbooking Ideas and Sketches. That is page six if you're wanting to do it and do it as a double spread. So until I see you next time, happy scrapping.